Farrakhan inherited the New York ministry of Malcolm X. And after the death of Nation of Islam founder Elijah Muhammad, Farrakhan assumed leadership of the Chicago-based sect. His rhetoric from the pulpit was fiery but drew no national notice. Translated into politics, it became explosive. At the urging of Jesse Jackson, Farrakhan six years ago registered to vote, becoming an active supporter of Jackson's presidential hopes and an incendiary surrogate in the campaign. The rule of Caucasian people is a rule that is based on injustice and against the will of God. His words ignited rage when he called Judaism in Israel a gutter religion and when he praised Adolf Hitler in a speech closed to cameras. Hitler was a very great man. Often dogged by demonstrators at public appearances, he draws huge crowds on lecture tours that stop at giant sports arenas or college auditoriums. But even Farrakhan's defenders admit his underlying message, promoting black self-development, opposing drug use and crime, is frequently upstaged by the anger of his oratory. These people intend your and my destruction. And the blacks in government are placed there to be apologists for this bureaucracy that is destroying your people. What are you he claims that America? Jews in America hold too much power, yet insists he's not anti-Semitic nor anti-white. Farrakhan is a victim of press distortion, he says, and the target of a federal assassination plot. And through interviews and talk shows, he's now on a campaign to engage mainstream America in a new debate. Richard Roth, CBS News, New York. And Minister Louis Farrakhan joins us live from the Chicago headquarters of the Nation of Islam. Good morning, sir. Good morning. A, a lot of people in America are curious why all of a sudden the heretofore unavailable and uninterviewable Louis Farrakhan, the man who supposedly hates whites and hates Jews, wants to talk to everybody. Why is that? Well, sir, that is America's characterization of me through the media. However, I think the American people need to see, hear, touch, and feel Louis Farrakhan for themselves. And I believe if they are allowed to do that, they'll make their own judgment, not determined for them by a small group of persons who run the media or the newspapers, but they'll be able to make that determination of who and what I am when they see and hear me for themselves. You are a disciple of Elijah Muhammad, who said, did he not, all whites are devils, evil by nature? You believe that? Yes, I am a disciple of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he most certainly characterized the evil that white America has practiced uh, on black people as most certainly not of God, but rather of Satan. And no one who looks at our history and the history of the relationship of whites to the darker peoples of the world would dare say that that uh, interaction has been saintly or godly, but the opposite. Do you hate white people? No, sir. I don't hate white people. I understand white people. And I want white people and black people to understand this message from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You have said that Judaism is a gutter religion. Can you no, deny sir. or explain that? No, sir, I never said that. The state of Israel has no state religion. I said the state of Israel has not had any peace in 40 years and she will not have peace because there can be no peace structured on injustice and lying, thievery, and murder. And that, I felt, is the practice of unclean and dirty religion that is being practiced by Israel right up to this very moment, taking the land of the Palestinians and encouraging Soviet Jews to come by numbers into the West Bank, taking more and more land away from the Palestinians. I don't think that's the way to get peace in the Middle East, and I characterize that as practicing unclean religion. Uh, are there examples within the Muslim religion that you can cite of unclean religion? Of course. We are in America in this condition because some of our African brothers sold us, and some Arab uh, brothers sold us 
and some Jewish persons owned ships, and some Europeans captained those ships, and the Americans crushed us, so-called Americans, who were Christians, crushed us. That's what we call the practice of dirty religion. And when Muslims kill each other, when Muslims engage in that which is against the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we then are practicing unclean religion. We have an incredible list of uh, territory to cover here. Among the issues are statements that you have made about uh, Jews in America. Uh, as Richard Roth stated in his piece, one of the things that you have said over and over and over again is that Jews are too powerful. That's also something no, that's have... also something that you hear from the KKK. It's also something you hear from the Aryan nations. We don't care who speaks truth. We should be able to recognize the truth. So you 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 have you have feelings akin to uh, white racists? Certainly, sir. There uh, no one will argue that the Jews have power well beyond their numbers. And this is to their credit not to their detriment. What we as black people need is to maximize our strength and gain power inside America that we may do something constructive for ourselves. We don't deny Jews or Irish or Italians or anyone else right and access to power. But what we do condemn and criticize is the misuse of power to create the ghetto, maintain the ghetto, and condone the ghetto. So Jews are responsible for maintaining the ghetto, is no, what I just No, but white you society say. is, sir. White society has created the ghetto. White institutions maintain the ghetto. White society condones the ghetto. These are not my words. These are the words of the Kerner Commission established by Lyndon Johnson. Do you believe there's a government conspiracy to kill you? I know that there is a government conspiracy to get rid of Louis Farrakhan, as there was a government conspiracy to get rid of Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, and to destroy black leadership and black organizations. This same government, the U.S. government, was responsible for the murder of Diem in Vietnam, Patrice Lumumba in the Congo, and uh, tried on three occasions to assassinate Michael Manley, and was responsible for the assassination of Allende in Chile, mm -hmm. and, and their uh, wicked attempts of the CIA led to the killing of over a half a million Indonesians under the Sukarno regime. Yes, this government not only plans and carries out assassinations, but anybody that it fears, it will move to get rid of. And unfortunately, the government fears my growing mm -hmm. influence over black America and the growing influence among whites. We've got about a minute left. Amidst all this controversy, there are a number of people, black and white, who are recognizing the success that the Nation of Islam has had in cleaning up neighborhoods in the inner cities, in rehabilitating people, uh, uh, criminals and drug addicts. How have you had that success? This success comes from the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who taught us our relationship to God. And he makes us to know ourselves and then to love ourselves. And when one knows self and loves self, one refuses to harm oneself. And it is this moral message, this uh, intellectually inspiring message that causes criminals to come out of uh, 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 crime and causes drug addicts to come mm -hmm. out of drugs. And this is what has caused the Muslims to be so successful mm -hmm. at Mayfair Mansions in Washington, D.C. And here in Chicago, we hope to adopt one of the worst housing projects and prove that the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad can really save our people. Louis Farrakhan, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. It's 22 minutes past the hour.